Now let's move on to orthopedic tests of the hip. Uh, before I get started, I'd like to mention normally we would perform a straight leg raise as part of this examination, but we're not going to demonstrate that here. If you'd like, we have a video of that already. It's part of our low back examination and we're going to put a link up in the top right corner. Please click on it and check it out. So the first test we're going to do here if we suspect a hip fracture is the log rolling test. So basically we're going to create a rolling motion back and forth of the leg and we're looking to see if there's any pain that's elicited higher up in the hip joint. If we suspect that something may be going on there and this motion of rolling back and forth is painful, we're going to test it by doing a compression test. We're going to gently support the leg and we're going to hit the bottom of the foot here, trying to compress the leg upwards to elicit a pain response. So we're going to tap a few times. Another way to do this is we would bend the knee, bringing this up. And this time I'm going to tap straight down on the femur this way. Oh, got a patella reflex there. Okay, so tapping down. And then lastly, we would go to the side of the hip and hit it from a lateral aspect. So we would tap inwards this way. And on each test that we're doing, we're looking to see whether we're eliciting pain at the top of the hip in the joint here. The next test is the Faber test. It's an acronym that stands for Flexion, Abduction, External Rotation. Now this test actually will cover a lot of different uh, potential pathologies. So starting out, you're going to bring the hip into 90 degrees of flexion. You're going to start to abduct and externally rotate, placing this in a figure four type position across the opposite leg above the knee. I'm going to stabilize the opposite ASIS and I'm pushing down on the knee here. Now, what we'd like to see in a negative test is that the knee drops below or is in line with the opposite knee. If it's above that point, this would be considered a positive test. But just because it's a positive test, you still have to do some investigating. You have to find out where the discomfort is because this is a test for the sacroiliac joint, also the hip joint, and the surrounding soft tissue structures. So there could be a lot of different pain generators. So this is the Faber test. Now the next test is the Thomas test. This test is primarily done to check for an iliopsoas contracture or primary hip flexor contracture. Before you start, you want to observe and palpate with your hands and see if there's a hyperlordosis. So if the patient were quite lordotic in this region here, that would be one indication that the hip flexors are already shortened and contracted. What we're going to have Lindsay do here is you're going to take this leg and bring that hip way up into flexion, grab your knee with your hands and pull it in as tight as you can. And you're looking to see if there's any strain or symptoms on the opposite side. And specifically, as you, we can see here, Lindsay's actually quite good, but let's say that this hip flexor were contracted on this side, you would see the leg come up. So patient is pulling up the knee opposite to the side that's being tested. So that is the Thomas test. Now, while we're in the supine position, let's do a piriformis muscle assessment. If you're suspecting piriformis syndrome or deep luteal syndrome, this is how you would check for it. We'd start off with a straight leg test. So we're gonna bring this up like a straight leg test to about 90 degrees. Now, if the symptoms are localized and primarily in the gluteal region, to test that piriformis, we're going to bend the knee, bring the leg into a little bit of adduction and further flexion. So as we do this, we're pulling that piriformis and we're stretching it and it's gonna compress into the sciatic nerve, eliciting a localized pain there, reproducing the patient's symptoms. Good. So that would be a test to do for any suspicion of piriformis syndrome. Now let's look at the Trendelenburg test. And this test is primarily examining the gluteus medius muscle. So you start out with your patient facing away from you, standing. You're gonna get them to stand on one leg. So Lindsay, I want you to hike this right leg up to about 90 degrees, perfect. Now, in Lindsay's case, she's strong, there are no issues, but what a positive test would look like, if there were a problem on this left side, the right side would dip down. And this would be indicative of some type of gluteal medius pathology, and there's a number of things that could occur here, whether it's inhibited, weakened, or if there's a muscle tear. So this would be a positive Trendelenburg on that left side. Now that concludes a basic hip orthopedic examination. What we would do in practice is combine that examination with a lumbar spine orthopedic examination as well as a lower extremity neurological examination. 
As we know, hip pathology or hip pain can actually originate elsewhere. So you want to make sure it's not a radiculopathy or something that's being referred from higher up in the chain. So if you're interested in checking out our videos, please check out our physical examination playlist. Thank you for watching and we'll see you soon.